I mean, it's really about getting getting kids, you know, you have to remember that they've already been in school all day. Yeah. So the kinds of teaching that's really effective yeah. are, you know, when you go in with some Cambodian pop music mm-hmm. and teach them, you know, six words that they can use to move around and do mm-hmm. a you know, quote unquote aerobics class yeah, where yeah. they, you know, move right, move left, mm-hmm. stop, clap their hands, jump, you know, or something. You're listening to Speaking of Language, a podcast recorded at the Language Resource Center at Cornell University. I'm Dan Gable, technology manager for the LRC. Each week, we explore a topic related to language pedagogy and second language acquisition. This week on Speaking of Language, Brenna Fitzgerald, RBS Loluni, and Thamora Fischel talk about the after-school language and culture program that is offered through Cornell's Area Studies Centers in the Inaudi Center and the Public Service Center. The program provides opportunities for Cornell undergraduate and graduate students to share their knowledge of a language and culture with curious students from local schools. Welcome to a new episode of Speaking of Language. I'm Angelica Kramer, the director of the Language Resource Center at Cornell University. Today, we welcome three colleagues to the studio. Brenda Fitzgerald, RBS Loluni, and Thamora Fischel work on language and culture outreach programs on campus and in the area. And of course, they all work on many, many other things, and we'll hear a little bit about that in a moment here. Brenna is the K-12 Outreach Coordinator for the Area Study Programs in the Ainaudi Center for International Studies. RBS is the After School Language and Culture Program Manager and also graduate student in the Master of Public Administration Program. And last, but certainly not least, Thamora is the Associate Director of the Southeast Asia Program and has previously taught Thai in an earlier iteration of this after-school language and culture program that we are going to talk about today. Welcome to Speaking of Language to you guys. Thanks. Thanks. It's exciting to have all three of you here at the table. So before we start talking about this uh, language and culture outreach program, Can you please introduce yourself um, again to our audience, just giving us a little bit of background of um, what you do on campus and also your experiences with languages? Brenna, do you want to start? Sure. Um, So I am the outreach coordinator, the K-12 outreach coordinator for all the area studies programs within the Ainaudi Center, Um, and I manage... Um, the after school language and culture program, mm-hmm. as well as uh, a, a library of resources that we call the Outreach Lending Library that consists of DVDs and books and culture kits that, that K through 12 teachers and post secondary faculty can check out mm-hmm. to use, um, infuse their teaching with objects and um, supplemental materials on okay. particular world regions. Um, I also my, the other hat I wear is communications, mm-hmm. so I'm kind of doing a lot of coordination between the different area studies programs in collaboration, um, running an outreach newsletter, um, editing uh, the Southeast Asia Program Bulletin, which mm-hmm. is their print publication that comes out twice a year, and highlights outreach programs as well as student and faculty stories. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of the basics of my position. Yeah. Uh, what about your personal experience with mm-hmm. language learning? Yeah, so I I guess my first exposure to language learning was in seventh grade. I took French, mm-hmm. um, took it all the way through middle school, high school, and college. Nice. Um, and I studied abroad in France when I was at Cornell for mm-hmm. a summer. Um, and so, you know, French, I mean, I got just through the language, I got really interested in French culture. Yeah. Um, I was a former dancer, so I had sort of been inundated with a lot of French okay. words yeah. as, a, as a ballet sure, dancer. Sure, yeah. um, and uh, I really like French food and <laughs> you know, breads and cheese. I know. It's like all the good things, bread, cheese, chocolate, dessert, wine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and I think the, the sort of moment that really uh, transformed me was actually learning Hindi when I, Mm -hmm. after I graduated from high school, I went to India on a rotary exchange program. And I started learning Gujarati, actually, Mm because that's the language of the state that I was in. But I also learned some Hindi. And I was there for a year in four different host families. Mm -hmm. And that was really a pivotal moment in my life. I mean, it kind of turned me from the high school dancer that I was to just... A completely different person mm-hmm, in the mm-hmm. world and I, I think from that point I just got really passionate about 
cross-cultural exchange and cross-cultural yeah. learning. And That's fantastic. Through language and also through culture. So, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Awesome. RBS, what about you? Um, so as you mentioned, I'm now managing the After School Language and Culture Program. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very interesting because we have a variety of different Cornell students who are both undergrad and graduate students participating and wanting to share their own unique langu language skills and mm -hmm. culture with um, students from around the area. I also have like a personal connection with the program. Mm -hmm. um, when I was uh, younger, um, I'm, I'm from Co Kosovo, which is a very new country in the world. And um, I learned my first language was Albanian, which is my native language, mm -hmm. but my right second language was uh, German. And I learned that by just watching cartoons on television. Mm -hmm. And so like that aspect of fun and engagement, yeah. I really want to, to bring uh -huh. that to, to the students yeah, that we're, we're teaching. Yeah. Um, and then obviously I speak a little bit of English as well. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. Great. That's fantastic. Thamora, what about you? Well, I actually spent part of my childhood abroad. Mm -hmm. um, I was in India for a bit when I turned four, and then um, from five to nine, I was in the Philippines. Oh, wow. And when I was in the Philippines, one of the schools I went to was the Paco Chinese School. Huh. And so um, we had half the day in Mandarin, half the day in English, and then Tagalog um, oh, on the playground. Wow. Yeah. And, um, huh. And so I didn't learn that much Chinese, <laughs> yeah. but I was exposed to it, which was kind of fun because in college I went back and actually studied um, Chinese throughout college. Yeah. Um, but while I was there, I was fluent in Tagalog, you know, at a of course a, yeah. a kid level. Yeah. Um, and my parents loved to tell stories about me bargaining on their behalf in the market <laughs> and, and and that kind of thing. And. Um, and so even though I did Spanish in high school because it was basically Spanish and French that were mm. available, by yep. the time I got to college, I was really excited about the opportunity to learn a completely different language that wasn't offered in high uh -huh. school. And for me, the um, the characters of Chinese were so fascinating just because you couldn't read oh, them yeah. without studying them. Yeah. And so that was kind of the beginning. And then when I um, was thinking about grad school, um, I had been living in Taiwan and was, as I kind of became more and more interested in anthropology, I mm -hmm. realized that there were plenty of people doing research on Taiwan. My experiences in mainland China made me very, um, very concerned about the ethics of doing research in mm. a place where talking to people might get them in trouble. Sure. And I also realized that I'd need to learn a different dialect of Chinese mm -hmm, anyway. Mm -hmm. yep. And so at that point, I was like, well, why not just start a whole new language? Huh. And so for grad school, I started Thai. And okay. so that's the language I'm currently most fluent in. And um, when this program started up first about 10 years ago, um, at one point, I just figured the best way to learn about how the program worked was to teach in it. Of course, um, of course. And yeah. so I paired up with one of our undergraduates who was Burmese, uh -huh. and she did Burmese, and I did Thai, and then provided the ride to and from the Trumansburg Elementary School. Okay, great. Well, this is a perfect segue into actually talking about the program. So you said about 10 years ago this initiative started, mm -hmm. and it was housed in the area studies programs at that point in time? It was. At that point in time, we actually had an outreach coordinator who... Um, reported to the Anaudi Center and mm -hmm. kind of covered all the world areas. And so we had been, you know, batting around some different ideas about how to get this started and figure out ways to get students out into the community. Mm -hmm. And as we, you know, pushed into classrooms and did different workshops and activities, we realized that if we wanted to um, be able to evaluate the impact we were having and yeah. really measure it in some way, we couldn't just do one-off events. And uh -huh. so we were trying yep. to envision something that had a bit more longevity, that engaged with um, students and other volunteers from the campus community. And we decided that focusing on language was a way to be really concrete and that culture uh -huh. was a part of that. Of but course, we wanted yeah. them to, to not just have this kind of surface level engagement with a culture that stayed at the level of uh -huh. holidays or dress or, you know, yeah. that stuff could be part of it. But we really wanted to um, 
provide something that had substance. Mm-hmm, and I think mm-hmm. language is a really important way to introduce mm-hmm. um, cultures and cultural differences and to help kids understand that through language, your way of thinking about the world is going to be shaped by the kinds of vocabulary that's available yep. to you, the kind of grammatical structures that you're working within. Mm-hmm. And that, that that interplay between language and culture yeah. is, is w- one of the most exciting things to learn about. And yeah. so that's kind of the was the foundational idea. And we Mm -hmm. started out in um, some of the Ithaca schools and after-school programs, but we're really trying hard um, to get it out to more rural areas. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's what's been going on, but in different iterations, Mm -hmm. according to how much funding there's been available from the federal government and within Mm -hmm. Cornell to run the program. So what's the nature of the program right now? Who is the target audience? RBS, you had mentioned graduate and undergraduate students are involved, but um, exactly who are players in this in this program? So as as Tamora was saying earlier, it's both undergrads and grads, but as well as uh, volunteers in the Cornell commu- wider Cornell community, and they are um, very very excited to share their language mm-hmm. and culture with with um, more rural. Um, schools. Um, our partner schools at the moment are three. Uh, most of our target students are actually at the, at the grades one through five. Okay. Although it's a K through 12. Sure. But really the focus is because going back to anyone who has ever tried to learn a language, uh-huh. the older we get, yeah. the harder it becomes to learn a language. So we're trying to to uh, expose the students to really as early as possible to have access to this foreign Mm -hmm. language that otherwise maybe they wouldn't have Mm -hmm, access mm to. Nice. That's fun. Mm -hmm. So um, what does, what does a program look like? Brenna, maybe you can Mm -hmm. speak to that. So what does it, if, if our Cornell team goes to one of these schools, what do they do? Yeah. So Actually, RBS might be able to speak more about the nitty gritty of of what they're doing based on Mm -hmm. the kind of training that you gave the volunteers. But I'll give a sort of broad overview of the program. So as RBS said, um, there's three schools currently that we're running the program in. um, But we actually have a partnership with the Public Service Center at Cornell. Mm -hmm. They have um, a tutoring program that's um, funded by the 21st Century Grant. And that program offers tutoring in, I think, math and science Mm -hmm. to... Um, s- students in an after-school program in four different districts. So Waverly, hmm. Watkins Glen, Spencer Van Etten, and Odessa Montour. And they're mm-hmm. all like kind of rural districts. So in um, this, in re-envisioning this program, uh, we decided to connect up with them at the, with uh, Chelsea Benson at the uh, Public Service Center and link and, and ask her if the schools that they partner with um, in these districts have an interest in mm-hmm. and or need for um, enrichment yeah. programs. Yep. And they did. So not just the the tutoring programs, but the enrichment as well. Yeah. So we thought, okay, well, we can offer that. You can offer this this structure for our after-school language and culture program to reach these rural schools, and we can offer the program. Yeah. So that's kind of where um, the new structure for the After School Language and Culture program emerged. Mm-hmm. And that started in September. Um, and it's a pretty new program. So we're, we're still formalizing the partnerships mm-hmm. with a lot of the schools, yeah. which is why it's only being run in about three schools sure. right now. Um, and so in previous iterations of this, of this program, when it was mostly in Ithaca, it would run for about six weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a volunteer would come into an, you know, after school or enrichment program mm-hmm, at, mm-hmm. A, at a school and, you know, choose maybe like six aspects of the language they want to teach. So maybe yeah. the alphabet, maybe food, vocabulary, maybe arts. Mm-hmm. And they would, um, you know, do different lessons around that. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe uh, I, there was one Hindi teacher who brought in some like little Indian treats for the kids. Fun, yeah. um, and then she also taught them another week, like a song mm-hmm. in um, in Hindi that they sang. Um, so there's just different, you know, engaging, fun activities yep. where they're learning the language and applying it, but also enjoying themselves mm-hmm. and learning about the culture. Mm-hmm. And they'll do that for about six weeks. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, another volunteer will will rotate in and, and offer another mm-hmm. language. 
Cool. Um, and the program's a, a little bit different now, and you can probably talk about the details. RBS can talk about the details more. I think there are four-week programs. Do you want to talk mm -hmm. about? Sure. So, um, because uh, we are relying on um, volunteer bases from mm -hmm. Cornell students yeah. mostly, um, they're busy. They're all very busy, and they yep. have as, as being a grad student myself, and we understand that. And this program is um, supposed also to be fun, also for them and mm -hmm. engaging. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're constantly trying to provide mentorship and training to yeah. our volunteers and resources, so that they're they f they feel um, less burdened by the program, and instead as a way to explore and re in reconnect also with their own language skills. Because I know that if I don't practice my German or or even my own language, I will forget it eventually, <laughs> sure, right? Sure, yeah. So it's also a great opportunity for them. Um, currently, we are offering the program for four weeks and eight weeks. Uh -huh. um, so depending on the on our volunteers' availability, mm -hmm. they can either commit to four weeks or eight weeks, Got it. and then proceed from there mm -hmm. again, restart, or if they need uh, to move to move to a different uh, mm -hmm. activity, that's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. So the languages that you offer are basically dependent on whoever your volunteers are, I assume, then? Correct. Okay. Uh, currently, we, we have um, Filipino, Hindi, French, Spanish, Albanian, Chinese, or Mandarin. Wow, that's great. That's, <laughs> yeah. a, that's a nice variety. Yeah, of we've even different. taught Macedonian in the uh -huh, past, uh -huh. um, and Swahili was offered uh, a number of times at the Southside Community Center. Yeah, and so, okay. you know... And we've you know had Burmese and Vietnamese and um, Malayam from South Asia. I mean, so really yeah. a huge variety. And sometimes we've had requests from schools for uh -huh. particular uh -huh. languages because they have a lot of kids from a certain country sure. or a certain region. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we try to grant that as much as it can coordinate with the the volunteers' availability. And yeah. yeah. But but the overarching objective, you know, we're very clear about upfront is not that we expect any of these students to, to to gain proficiency yep. or no. come out fluent. Yep. I mean, not only is it a very short time, but mm -hmm. they're not going to have an opportunity necessarily to keep it up. Mm -hmm. And so the real goal is to plant the seed mm -hmm. of interest in yep. language yep. learning yep. and to have an experience of exposure to a part of the world that they may not have had yeah. any knowledge about and kind of plant that seed of interest yeah. in learning about languages and cultures. Yeah. So this is fantastic. What a what a wonderful program, and outreach programming is is very dear to my heart. That's what I've been doing for the last seventeen years of my life. So, <laughs> I'm I'm very happy to see that this program is thriving and and growing. And maybe we'll throw in German too. Wir sollten das vielleicht. Ja, genau, das machen wir ab sofort. Well, and it's I mean it's really about getting getting kids. You know, you have to remember that they've already been in school all day. Yeah. So yeah. the kinds of teaching that's really effective yeah. are, you know, when you go in with some Cambodian pop music mm -hmm. and teach them, you know, six words that they can use to move around and mm -hmm. do a you know, quote unquote aerobics class yeah, where yeah. they, you know, move right, move left, mm -hmm. stop, clap their hands, jump, you know, or something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, or, you know, for the Thai class that I taught, um, you know, I used a tune that all of the students were familiar with, but every week we would start with the basic greetings and what's your name in Thai. And so mm -hmm. we, you know, start with Sawadika, Sawadika, Chiarai. Yeah. And we would just, you know, really get the how do you greet and yeah. say your name but when you add you know a tune to uh -huh. it then it's so much easier to kind of dredge that from your memory even if you're not doing any homework or studying it oh, absolutely um, and we've had people bring you know games that are from their uh -huh. country yeah. to share with kids or you know as we've said crafts um, foods are a little tricky because yeah. you'll, you'll get into oh, the, yeah. you know, of allergies course. and the no red dye <laughs> and that sort of thing. But, you know, as much as possible, we've tried to make it something that's very hands on yeah. and, you know, the, the kind of thing that, that kids can take something home mm -hmm, with them. Mm -hmm. So um, with languages that have different scripts, making, you know, little mm -hmm. signs with their name on it yep. spelled out in the script that they can put on their door at home yep. or just stuff like that. Absolutely. So it's really it's yeah. a lot of fun. And we have a lot of accompanying materials in our lending library that a lot of the volunteers can um, mm -hmm. can draw upon. One example that um, is a 
Chinese calligraphy kit, mm -hmm. um, culture kit, so we can, you know, provide that yeah. and they can, you know, facilitate kids writing their name mm -hmm. in Chinese Fun. with that kit. And so kind of takes the burden of lesson plan of too much lesson planning or sure. trying to find materials sure. off yeah. the burden off the volunteers because mm -hmm. they can, um, you know, check out these materials that we have. Yeah, so. that's great. So if anybody wants to get involved um, as a volunteer, for example, what, what do they do? Where do they go? How do they find more information? In general, we have been trying to provide um, information sessions okay. um, here at Cornell. But there's also the opportunity to reach out directly to us via okay. email. And I'm, I'm probably just going to share that here, but it should be also on our uh, website. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, we, will, we will link that website as part of perfect. the podcast so people can... So the, be the, one click away. The email uh, is outreach at anainudi.cornell.edu where you, um, if you're a program coordinator and you're really excited about running this program in your school, mm -hmm. that's the email or that's okay. the contact person. Actually, at this point, I would really like kind of to also thank our school partners, mm. Matthew Brunel, Melinda Brewster, and Maria Vitucci, who have been so helpful. And Great and um, patient with us coordinating yeah. our students with them yeah so yeah and and cornell students should email you at, at uh, mm -hmm. outreach at exactly. .edu as well mm -hmm. because that's where you can find out and get on the mailing list mm -hmm. to be contacted when the next round of trainings mm -hmm. take place for next year's program mm -hmm. Correct. so fantastic and Wonderful. that's where you can also if you're a current volunteer learn about the materials that we have and schedule uh -huh. an appointment with myself or RBS to show you the, the materials that we have and yeah. help you kind of plan some lessons. Great. Wonderful. Well, this is such a neat program that just, I think it's so important um, to reach out to the community. Yeah. And, and I would say, I mean, you don't have to be a native speaker to, mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. participate. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, I think if you have even intermediate level mm -hmm. language skills in whatever language you're studying, mm -hmm. um, this is a really great way to hammer it home in your head because mm -hmm. you're sharing what you've learned yeah. already with kids. And, yeah. the, and the period of time is so short that you're not going to run out of your language yeah. capacity. And what you're doing is modeling for them um, how to learn a language mm -hmm. um, by teaching mm -hmm. it. And, yep. and likewise, if, if you're a native speaker of a language, it's a really great way to share mm -hmm. Um, and use your language. Um, so, so it's really open to a wide range of, of people on the campus. Yeah. yeah, that's a great point. Wonderful. Thank you so much to the three of you for coming here today and for talking about this wonderful initiative. Um, and I hope that we can continue to work together with the Language Resource Center. We certainly have people, we have materials, we have resources, myself being one of them. So I look forward to continued collaborations here. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. Vielen Dank an euch. Next week, we will talk about telecollaboration and intercultural learning with Teresa Schenke. Dr. Schenke is the German language program director at Yale University and has recently conducted interesting research on the effects of using photos in online exchanges between students in the U.S. and in German-speaking countries. Until then, auf Wiederhören. The Language Resource Center is located on the ground floor of Stimson Hall on Cornell's main campus in Ithaca, New York. Check us out on the web at lrc.cornell.edu or look for Cornell LRC on Facebook and Twitter. Speaking of Language is produced by Sam Lupwitz and Dan Gable. Recorded by Sam Lupwitz. Original music by Sam Lupwitz, Dan Gable, and Joe Gibson. Thanks also to the College of Arts and Sciences at Cornell University. As a reminder, the ideas and opinions expressed on this podcast do not reflect those of the College of Arts and Sciences or any other official entity of Cornell University. We thank our listeners and do stay tuned for our next episode. <laughs>